We're live from the Wounded Warriors Ride in Babylon, New York. What's up? Welcome to the GCN Show. This week we ask if there's a new Lance Armstrong controversy, and most importantly, should we really care? We also have some epic feats of endurance for you and a brand new wild competition. Yeah, and will we see the end of two of cycling's biggest problems in Tech of the Week? No more fitness tests because of an app that calculates your FTP from live ride data, and no more naked Mario Cipollini because of a jersey that promises no more tan lines. Will we really ever see an end to Naked Chipley? I don't think it's possible. I don't think we will, but maybe old age might see an onset of less nakedness. I don't know. Maybe we should put an end to it here and now. No more Chipolini naked on the GCN show. We can only hope. Yeah. This week in the world of cycling, we've seen what I consider to be irrefutable proof that cycling could indeed save the world. Though after the roads were closed in London for the Ride London Sportif, the air quality did this. I tell you what, Matt, I want to live in a city with air quality like that. I'll have to join you. Yeah. Now this week we also saw road bikes taken to a whole new level. Chris Atkrig has pushed his gravel bike into uncharted territory with this new video. Whilst at the Tour of Poland, we saw a horse trying to infiltrate the peloton, and Simon Godziek, not exactly known for his race results, trying to do the same as well. Brilliant. Bonkers. Definitely. But bonkers. Brilliant. Definitely. Now, we've also seen some more controversy surrounding Lance Armstrong, stirred up by some sections of the cycling media. And we, well, we want to know your thoughts on it. That's right. So, the backstory, of course, Lance was famously served with a lifetime ban from competition, having admitted to doping to win seven Tours de France. But that ban is not just from competition, it's also from activity surrounding competition, sanctioned competition. That bit's really important. Then Lance has made some of a return to the cycling sphere this summer with a daily podcast during the Tour de France, but the controversy now stems from the fact that the new Colorado Classic bike race have apparently asked Lance to do his podcast from the event. Yeah, now whether that constitutes official activity and therefore violates the terms of his ban will no doubt be subject to quite intense legal debate, but kind of more importantly, we want to know whether we should care or do we care in the first place. That's right. If you're not really fussed about what Lance gets up to now, then vote no, I don't care. However, if you think Lance has no place around the sport of cycling, then say yes, I do care. Vote up there. And also get to work in the comments section as yeah. well. We know it's going to go up like a bit of a tinderbox on this particular subject, but we do encourage your views down below. But please, please just keep it simple. Yeah, do. Uh, Nothing really uh, polarises cycling quite like Lance Armstrong. I suppose there's the sock length debate. That comes close, doesn't it? And also Mario Cipollini naked. Oh, do we have to see Mario Cipollini naked again? At least Lance didn't get naked. No. Actually, that's not, that's not true. He was a triathlete. He spent oh. half his career naked, didn't he? Uh, right, OK. Uh, let's lift things up a notch, shall we? So to speak, with Mark Beaumont. Yeah. He is now nearing the halfway point of his round the world record attempt. So that means he's been on the road for nearly 40 days, maths fans. Uh, and he's now currently battling the short days of the Australian winter and the really technical, oh, twisty yeah. roads of the Australian outback. Hello, GCN. You're catching up with me in the dark um, on the 90 mile street. 90 mile street road, can you imagine I've got an exciting ride into the dark here. Um, but uh, I've just finished um, my first month on the road and clocked up, was it 7,043 miles? Um, I realise people in history have cycled more than that, I don't know how much more, but uh, nobody, nobody's actually claimed the official Guinness World Record. So en route to hopefully the circumnavigation world record, I thought it would be a worth one to tick off as well. So there's a challenge for all you keen bean roadies out there, 7,043 miles. Hopefully that will get verified in the coming weeks as the new official world record for the most miles cycled in a month. And I do take that with a pinch of salt because I appreciate some people might have pedalled further. But I'm happy about that. It was a long way, including a big flight from uh, Beijing to, uh, to Perth. Um, but yeah, 
90 miles straight. I was here 10 years ago on my own with a touring bike. So I'm back here this time with a full sport team and media crew. And uh, it's exciting, heading into the outback, um, doing some night riding, the odd kangaroo on the roadside. But uh, yeah, we'll catch up soon. Have you seen this yet? Yes, the Global Triathlon Network is coming very, very soon. That's been in the offing and in the planning stages for quite a while now, but from what we've seen, it looks absolutely fantastic. Now, Heather and Mark are heading up the presenting team, and already, us here at GCN have learned from their expertise. That's right. It's competition time now on the GCN Show, and this week, Wahoo have been kind enough to offer five Five yeah. of these brand new Element Minis to you lucky GCM viewers. So if you fancy winning one, then make sure you enter. The link to the competition is in the description beneath this video. Mm, I've also got a competition winner to announce. Now, the lucky winner of a Quark power meter, which will be sent directly to your home, following, of course, the unboxing competition last week, presented, of course, by Simon. Just here to my right is, drum roll please, Chan Wei Tak from Hong Kong. Congratulations. That's an exciting prize, isn't it's, it? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. It's now time for cycling shorts. We'll start cycling shorts with news, with news of cycling shorts, yeah. actually, because Adam Hansen of Lotto Sudal's incredible run of racing 18 consecutive Grand Tours is set to come to an end. He is apparently, although not confirmed, but apparently suffering from saddle sores. Ooh. Give him a round of applause as well for yeah. 18 consecutive Grand Tours. Big chapeau. Yeah, that's quite a big chunk of his life. Yeah, fair play. Uh, when you add it all together, I don't know what it is, it's going to be a quite a big number. We'll do some maths yeah. and someone can pop it in over the screen. Yeah. Right, from one rider who has had an impressive run to another rider who has had an impressive, if at times slightly controversial career, because Alberto Contador is set to retire in five weeks' time. Hola a todos. Hago este vídeo para informaros de dos cosas. Una es que participaré en la próxima Vuelta a España a partir del 19 de agosto. Y la segunda es que será mi última carrera como ciclista profesional. Lo digo contento, no lo digo con, con pena. Eh, es una decisión que he pensado muy bien y no creo que, que haya una despedida mejor que, que en la carrera de casa y, y en mi país. Estoy seguro que van a ser... Tres semanas de ensueño, eh, disfrutando de, de todo vuestro cariño y estoy deseoso de, de que llegue. Un saludo y a partir del 19 de agosto nos vemos en la carretera. Chao. It will be sad not to see Alberto well. running in the Pro Peloton in 2018 because he did really animate race. He gave him the extra rich layer with his unpredictable swashbuckling old school style of racing. Yeah, absolutely. He won a lot of fans even in the Tour de France this year, didn't he? He certainly did. It's a Adios, Alberto, I guess. Yeah. He also helped make one of my favorite GCN videos of all time. Ah, come on! Let's go! He put me in the hurt locker that day. <laughs> That's why it's one of my favorites. You are not professional, you need to train more. I was a professional 10 years ago. <sighs> uh, right, let's catch up with the transfer room that I'll show you now. Although it's not rumors anymore, these are official ones. Mm. Uh, so first up, Tony Gallopin is going to leave Lotto Soudal after four years and move to Agir Désert Le Mondial. Well then, thank you, uh, a few weeks back we commented on the rumour about Matteo Trentin going to Arca Scott. That is now confirmed, as is, interestingly, Cameron Meyer going to Arca Scott because he left Team Dimension Data mid-season mm. but is now going back to World Tour Racing with a three-year deal to take him through to the Tokyo Olympics. Mm, good stuff. Now, stepping away from the pro cycling scene just for a few moments and back to the world of ultra endurance. Now, we've already mentioned Mark Beaumont. Well, he's halfway around the world yes. on his record. But there's another rider, funnily enough, trying to break a world endurance record, also in Australia at the same time, oh. a chap called Ed Pratt. But his record, well, he's doing that on 
a unicycle, <laughs> albeit one with aero bars. Oh, nice! Yeah, now, of course. Obviously, being on a, Euros, a, uni, a unicycle, this record is taking a little bit longer than one with two wheels. Fair enough. Now, Ed did start way back. Well, he's in Somerset in this particular county where GCN headquarters is, but way back in March. Oh yeah, 2015. Oh yeah. Yeah, fair play to where he has been taking in the sights and sounds of the world along his journey. Yeah. And funnily enough, it's a record that has never been attempted before. Oh, so he can take his time. Yeah. Now let's take the pace up a notch again, shall we? Back to the transcontinental race across Europe. Because it's actually finished already mm. and it only started last week. So the first rider to get to Meteora in Greece was James Hayden and he managed it in a quite remarkable 8 days, 23 hours and 14 minutes, which is pretty impressive. Absolutely. Now, if you've not actually heard of James, you may actually remember him as the guy that taped his head to his neck on a previous edition of the Transcontinental Hard to race. forget that image, uh, isn't it? Bizarre indeed. Now, meanwhile, the rest of the field, well, they're spread in an arc, a very large arc, through Romania and Slovakia, still munching through an inordinate amount of kilometres en route to the finish, and also having to deal with a rather nasty heat wave that's uh, <laughs> yeah. spreading across Europe at the yeah. moment too. Much like this man, in fact, Sean Conway, a friend of the channel, who is also attempting his very own world record, this time to be the fastest person to cycle across Europe. So he's hoping to do it in 25 days, self-supported, and yes, his plant pot storage holder has gone with him again for the ride. That's the ultimate bog or hatch, isn't it? Bog or hatch, hatch or bog. I've got to <laughs> <laughs> Just pause. I did turn it off because that was really good. Last week, we announced pre-registration for the new GCN Club. And to be perfectly honest with you, we were absolutely thrilled that so many of you have expressed an interest in becoming involved. And many of your ideas and suggestions, well, they were absolutely fantastic. They were. We've got a little bit of an update for you then this week. One of the ideas that we've got in the pipeline. How do you fancy a pair of exclusive GCN Club socks? Mm. And not just one pair, one different new pair of GCN Club socks every month delivered to your door. That's the proposal on the table. Mm. Now they'll be available in limited number and for a small monthly fee, you can wear and show your allegiance to GCN with pride and continue to show your support for the channel. That's right. A pair of club socks every month. I mean, I just, I just love it. Yeah, well, it looks sharp every month. It too. does. Very cool. Now, of course, this is very much just the start. So uh, we'll be in touch to everyone who registered and uh, we will be asking for your opinions more and uh, you can let us know exactly what you'd like. Shape the GCN Club. Indeed. Talking of shaping the GCN Club, Come on. I've just been down the loom. Got the first Whoa. sock. Hot off the loom. This is, as Look you can see, GCN sock number one. No. Yeah. What do you reckon? Sort of minty fresh kind of I like that. going on with this first sock. I like sock. that. My only slight concern is they gave you sock number one. Well, How I've come you've got sock number one? I pulled a few strings down at the loom. Uh, at the loom factory. But yeah, I managed to get number one. few strings at the loom. But, get this, come a bit closer, mate. There's going to be a special limited edition founder member sock as well. But I didn't manage to get my paws on one of those. Right, so 001 is up for grabs? Yeah. Tech of the week. This week, bit of a surprise for you, it's going to be presented by our very own tech guru, John Cannings, in our maintenance set. That's right. Upstairs. He can handle tech. Question is, Matt, can he handle Mario Cipollini naked? Because that's Ooh. one of the things he's got to wrestle with. This week's GCN Tech of the Week could see the end of two blights in the world of cycling, fitness tests and tan lines. For anyone who's interested in performance, you'll be well aware of the need of having to gauge your fitness to see how you're progressing. One way of doing that is by doing a threshold power or an FTP test. Essentially, that's a one hour long or 20 minutes long brutal max efforts test. The results of that determine what power you can produce for a one hour long period. I know which one I'd rather choose out of 20 minutes or an hour. Now that might not be necessary anymore though. Excert have a really cool online facility that allows you to plan, optimize, and essentially monitor all of your training as well as giving you FTP results from your actual ride data. That has now been implemented onto an app that can simply be installed onto your Garmin. Now, all you have to do on this is just ride to your limit. So it could be a short ride, a long ride, it doesn't matter as long as you ride until you can't ride anymore. Now, the app itself is compatible with certain Garmin head units and with the Connect IQ function. Uh, you'll also need a power meter, that's essential obviously. The app itself is free, which is pretty cool. 
So if that's the end of fitness tests, have we got the end of Jersey tan lines? You could go from this to this. Now it's amazing that he's been able to stand in exactly the same place, clearly weeks apart, the same hair, the same background, quite simply incredible. Now for some of us, tan lines, they're a badge of honor, but often they're quite embarrassing to actually go down to the beach. So Ecoy, the French clothing manufacturer, have come up with a solution for that. So the Ecoy Solaire is apparently the world's first trans-bronzing cycling jersey. Apparently you can tan through it as if you're wearing a medium strength sunscreen. Now I'm not sure I'd look like that even with a tan. No, no chance. Racing news now and BMC's Dylan Turns took, well, without shadow of a doubt, the biggest win of his career by taking out the overall at the Tour of Poland, fulfilling, I think, the potential that he showed when he first joined BMC back in 2015. Now he set the foundation for his win with a mightily impressive victory on stage yeah. three, where he outpaced none other and world road race champion Peter Sagan on the brutally steep uphill run to the line. Now, rounding out the podium, second place was Rafa Maika of Borda Hansgrohe. Third place was Wout Poles of Team Sky, who also took an impressive victory on the final stage. He did. Interesting, you know, Dylan Toons uh, started his career with BMC at the same time that Ed Pratt set out to unicycle around the world. Interesting fact. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, right, another rider uh, who needs no introduction but also used his devastating form to good effect was Team Sky's Mikel Lander. He used his stellar Tour de France condition to great effect by winning the overall two stages, the points and the mountains classification at, yeah, at the Vuelta Burgos. And he pointed out afterwards that at the Tour de France, he went there as a domestique and he finished fourth. He was then made team leader for the Vuelta Burgos and he won it. Well, annihilated it, in fact. I like the way you just pointed that out. Yeah, you can't argue that, can you, really? Yeah. Well, the second edition or second running of the European Road Champs took place in Herning in Denmark over the weekend, and things started off with the time trials. Now, in the men's elite time trial, it was uh, Victor Campanaz of Belgium who took the win, so a great win for him there. And it was Ellen van Dijk who took a sec second successive uh, title in the European Championship by winning the women's. Now, a real illustration of how competitive it was in the men's elite time trial was this set of stats from Ryan Mullen. He finished just four seconds off the pace in the bronze medal position, but no stats. They Absolutely are almighty, nuts. aren't they? Those are impressive stats. They said, I, I mean, it's, I reckon it's, it's the world hour record potential right there. Well, you say that, Matt, but that time trial took 54 minutes. So mm. he's got six minutes to find. It could all unravel for him yeah, in that point. final six minutes. Drop off so, a cliff from that yeah, point, maybe more it? preparation yeah. needed, Ryan, yeah. but still Up your game, potential. Right. A bit of potential there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, in the road races, uh, it was Mariana Voss who won the women's race. Yeah. She outsprinted breakaway companions Georgia Bronzini and Olga Zabalinskaya to take that victory. And then in the men's race, it was run off in some pretty blustery, windy conditions. And it was, I think it's fair to say, resurgent Alexander yeah. Christoph of Norway who uh, sprinted to, well, a rather chaotic sprint win actually. Second place, Elia Viviani and Marina Hofland of the Netherlands was in third. Viviani not terribly impressed with Christoph sprinting, but actually unfounded I think. But uh, anyway, he nevertheless remonstrated with the Norwegian as he rolled across the line in that kind of a way that only Italians can manage. The rest of us just are like idiots when we do it. Yeah, they do it with style, don't they? They do, they do. Sticking with the European champs for a bit, sight. In the men's elite road race, Norway, well, they played an absolute tactical blinder to the extent to. that oh. this week's wattage bazooka goes to Edvald Boasenhagen of the Norwegian team. Now, he went clear with Nikolai Trusov and Jens Kukuleri in the last 10k. Then, yeah. in only the way that he can, with 1,500 metres to go, kind of surged off the front of the group and were looked set fair for victory but was caught agonisingly oh. close to the line with 300 metres to go. Yet still, he deserves this position. A good. surging wattage bazooka. Congratulations, yeah. Ed Val. They're the best type. We've got one more wattage bazooka this week. Of course, it's the GCN Viewer wattage bazooka. And this mm. week, it goes to Reese Edwards, nominated by his dad, Gareth. Apparently, according to his video, uh, his dad, Gareth, said uh, he did a bike throw on the line at the top of Alp Duez, but he didn't need to because he'd already knocked 27 minutes off his personal best time. 27 minutes? How good is that? To be fair, I, I, those days when you could knock 27 minutes off your personal best. Ugh. My personal best, I'm adding 27 minutes on top. Yeah, it feels like that, way, mate. Yeah. Keep them coming. Hashtag watch the bazooka. Yeah, please do. It's time now for hack forward slash. Thank you very much. Of the week, and we're going to start this week's with this. 
which is, well, actually stunning. Wow. To it's from Fergus Maine, who made this clock in his design and technology class using some old bike parts. I mean... Nice work, that Fergus. Is, it just looks great, doesn't it? Yeah. Real attention to detail. You've got the cogs, got the chain, got the wheel, and I guess it tells the time. Well, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? I'd buy that. Would you? I would. I'd buy that. I'd, I'd pay for it. I'd buy it. There you go. Hack. Yeah. And you definitely. can sell it to Matt as well. Yeah. Extra bonus. Right, this next one. Uh, I feel like I'm being trolled, Matt. Alex oh, Cadogan likes his fishing and his chain keepers. So there you go. There's a chain keeper. Although, actually, to be fair, I quite like this one. That, to my mind, sums up chain keepers. He's just got a dodgy old quick release and uh, a piece of old packaging. It's simple and effective. It's a nice yeah. bit of recycling there. Does as well. the trick. Whoa. Thirdly, on this week's, we've got this over on Instagram. This is from uh, Kings in Taiwan, from Tai Chung in Taiwan. Um, only in China. Basically, it's a saddle. Well, it's a it's a kind of uh, an ass saver made from what looks like a bird. Thankfully, the bird isn't a real one. Uh, isn't it? It's not as a real one. As far as we're aware, it's not, okay, a, it's right. not a real Good bird. Stuff. Okay. But uh, unorthodox, quite artful. I probably wouldn't buy that one. So. No. No. It's quite macabre. It is quite isn't it? macabre. Yeah, I'm not massively into taxidermy. I mean, no. still wouldn't want to sit on one. No. Like this, I really like. This is Tobias Dalhousie's A level coursework. So that's his like what? school weaving coursework. Portable cycling rollers. Look at that. That is a nice job. And then when you zoom in on the old rollers, look at the craftsmanship. That is. What's that? There's a theme emerging. Oh, yeah. I'd buy that. You'd buy that? Yeah. Tobias, stick on eBay. Matt's going to be. Yeah, I'd offer you a good deal. I mean, that's, that's a thing of beauty. It's not your position to offer him a good deal, is it? He's going to offer you a deal. It's probably not. Oh, that's where, yeah, that's how eBay works. Around, we'll come to some agreement. All right, somehow. Cool. Anyway, there you on. go. They're great. Right then, and then the last one. There's another one I like. This is looking good, isn't it? This is from Chris ha uh, Haymar. I turned a selection of old bike chains into a bottle opener. Yeah. How neat is that? You know what's coming next, don't you? No, what's that? I'd buy that. Yeah? Yeah, as a gift. Chris, stick it on eBay, that's yeah. going to buy it. <laughs> That's another GCN hack now, isn't it? Brilliant stuff. Keep me, keep me coming. Well, yeah, and now potentially you'll make money out of GCN hack because Matt's going to bid on it on it. Yeah, I feel my garage is in here quite full. <laughs> yeah. Caption competition now. Last week we had this picture of Peter Garn on the podium at the Tour of Poland. Now. Your entrance was so good, oh, for the yeah. first time in a long time, we've actually got two prizes. Second place- Two prizes? Two prizes. Now, second place, who also wins a bottle, is from Alan Parker, whose caption was, after downing the bottle, he'll be Peter, so gone. Oh, that is good. yeah. That's good, so that's like worth that. second, second place. We'll get another one for first. Here we go. And, wow, my word. All right, first prize then. This one, we really chuckled at, and many of you did as well. Yeah, Just it was good. Of upvotes under his comment. It's Stu H, this carver, dish Oof. goes down far too easily. Yeah, it was. A lot of mentions in the comments about elbows and all sorts. It was a, it was yeah. a cracking it's one a good this week. week. It was. Comments. And I suspect this week is oh. going to be good as well because yeah. it's that little horse that we talked about at the Tour of Poland. Just, yeah. you know, invading the punch. Can I have a go at this go one? On. You, you've already had a little practice, but there you go. The stage is your side. All right. After Rigoberto Aran's near miss at the Tour de France, the Candel Drapak team have decided to employ some more horsepower. Yeah. You know what to do. Uh, Come and stand yeah. Now, before we get to what's coming up on the channel this week, we thought we'd have a little look back under last week's videos, because as ever, you guys have been leaving some brilliant, brilliant comments. This one under the Psychology for Cyclists video really took my fancy. So we asked you what you did to help improve your mental state when riding, and Ricardo Ricks said he pretends to be a TV commentator and self-commentates his ride as if he's in a time trial going for a record. How cool is that? What a great idea. That's quite interesting insight into psychology. But when, when I was first doing commentary, cycling commentary, I actually commentated on myself in the car whilst driving. Yeah. My word. That's, a little bit weird. Yeah, anyway, a insight as well for you. Yeah, we've got another cracking comment. This was under the video about slamming a stem that me and Dan did over in Altabilia in Italy uh, from Dan Danda 71 now repeat that test over 100, 150, and 200 kilometer distance and tell us how your back feels. 120 likes on that. Fair point. It is a fair but point, actually. it was basically illustrating what the pros do, so they're pretty you know, dialed in for that sort of position. But you do raise a certain point. We'd never ever recommend here at GCN slamming your stem and just going out for a long ride. And any kind of changes to position should be done incrementally and over time. That's right. You won't go fast if you're uncomfortable. No way. But uh, if you are comfortable slammed, Seems like you will go faster. Indeed. I guess. Right then, coming up on the channel this week, let's hit it. What have we got, Matt? Indeed. Well, on Wednesday, it's how to pace for a sportif oh, using yeah. a power meter. And on Thursday, it's six tips for multi-day events. 
That's right, oh, that's Johnny your home Bev. route, Johnny Bevan. How's, yeah. it, how's it going, by the way? Pretty good. Pretty, Pretty good. good? Feeling fresh. Feeling fresh. Yeah. Hang on a minute, you're not tapering already, are you? No, a it's little a bit. bit. Yeah, a little oh, bit of tapering is going on. No. Few more days training? Yeah, good, good stuff. Lad, good lad. Good stuff. On Friday, ask GC anything. Yeah, Saturday, we've got a very lovely pro bike. It's Peter Sagan's new Specialized. And then on Sunday, pretty excited about this one, mate. Man, and I went to Berlin for a super commuter challenge. Uh, and then Monday, back in the maintenance set with Maintenance Monday. And on Tuesday, ask, it's not ask GCN thing, is it? It's the GCN show, mate. It is. <laughs> number 240. That's what I meant. Oh, yeah. It's such a high number that my brain couldn't cope. <laughs> it's time now for Extreme Corner. That's right. At the beginning of the show, we gave you a little sneaky clip of Chris Ankring's new gravel bike video, The Guide yep. Raw. It's so good, frankly, we thought you probably want to watch a little bit more. Here we go. Check it out. That is, that is good, I like that's watching that. That's pretty good. I mean, it was great, great skills, great video, couple of points. Well, yeah, that's true, actually, we did pick up. Firstly, Chris, uh, you didn't ride through the stream. Now, I was under the impression that when gravel riding, you should not avoid water. That's so, what we uh, did on our yeah. gravel, oh, exactly. gravel, gravel ride. Exactly, get your feet wet. Uh, and also, technically, Chris, that was actually a high-intensity gravel ride as well. Yeah, just, just I'd like to see there. your power file from that, because it did look like there was a lot of top end in there. Yeah. Uh, you probably want to knock it back a lot of high cadence stuff. Yeah, just saying. He's got a lot of power, hasn't he? He's, oh my word! Yeah, it's there, isn't it? Yeah, he, he just lets it go when he wants, doesn't he? Yeah, Bosch. What is bazooka right there? Actually. Yeah. Uh, right, that probably is all we've got time for now on the GCN show for this week. I'm afraid. Uh, before leaving, do uh, firstly remember to check out shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com if you like any of the GCN clothes that we wear or any other stuff that you find over in the shop. It's definitely worth checking out. Yeah, and if you haven't already subscribed to the Global Cycling Network, you can do so by clicking on the globe, which will be somewhere on your screen here, and that way you just won't miss another video, will you? True. And for talking of videos, how about clicking just down here for slammed, how much faster is it really? Yeah, or how to think yourself faster, psychology for cyclists, that one's definitely worth a watch, just down there. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up as well.